Okay, we are moving on to question four. So, it says Annex C shows a map of the Mountain Zebra National Park. So, we know that we have to go to our addendum, right? So, gone to our addendum. At the back, there's this map. Okay, so this is what we're going to be focusing on in this question. Okay, so it says use Annex C to answer the questions that follow. Okay, so remember when we start a new question on a new page, um, question four, and we have 4.1.1. Okay, so 4.1.1 says name all the activities offered in the circle Z. Okay, so let's see where the circle Z is. Okay, so it says that Z, this is the circle Z. Okay, so basically it's what it's testing us here is do we understand what each of these symbols are and do we know how to translate that into an activity using this legend or key, right? So let's just move that up a little bit so we can see. Okay, so we have this sort of rectangle and it says reception, right? So the first thing we can do is we can check in. Okay, that's what happens at reception. Then we have this kind of weird looking overly thing, which looks like it is a swimming pool, so you can swim. Okay, then we have this triangle, which looks like this camping area over here. So there's camping. Okay, and the last one is this little smiley face, which is a restaurant. So we can say eating out. Okay, so those are the four things we can do, right? You see it's for four marks. You would expect that it would be four things that you'd have to indicate. So we've done four things. So we think that we have pretty much done everything we need to do for that question. Okay, let's now look at the next question. So the next question says, identify the 4x4 four four route situated northeast, right, of the Yuri's Dam, or Yeris. I'm not sure how you say that. Apologies if I said that incorrectly. Okay, so, firstly, let's find the Yuri's Dam. Okay, so it appears that the Yuri's Dam is here. Right, so that's the Yuri's Dam. What's important here is that north is facing down, right? So we know that our compass, right, whatever north is, south is this way. Remember, we always go clockwise. I remember it as never eat silk worms, clockwise. So northeast, they're basically saying here, that direction from the Uri's Dam. So here's the Uri's Dam. If I go that direction, the 4x4 route is the Umgeni 4x4 route. Do you see that, right? So I basically said, if I'm at the Uri's Dam, Where's northeast? There's northeast. The closest 4x4 route to this northeast is Umgeni. So the answer to 4.1.2 is Umgeni. Okay, that's important because if we hadn't got that correct, right, we could have maybe said, is that son Sonaras? I don't know how you say that, Sonaras, right? You could have said the wrong one, but it's this one down here. So they're testing that one, you can identify why, where north is pointing. Then you can identify what the compass looks like. And then using that, you can navigate from one place to another. Okay, so that is that answer. Then for 4.1.3, it says determine the number of restaurants found on the map. Okay, so let's just use a little highlighter to do that. Okay, so we'll start from the bottom. So I see one. Two, three, four, five. So there are five restaurants. It's important, right? I remember I just went straight into it and said it's all these smiley faces because I remembered that a restaurant is with a smiley face from the question we did on the circle Z. So remember that it's just all these little smiley faces. And double check, I see that there is five. So we're just going to say five restaurants okay perfect so we're moving through this question quite quickly um if i'm going too fast just slow down the video or re-watch it but this one's not too difficult because it's literally just asking us to read off the map okay 
So then here for 1.4.4, I mean 4.1.4, sure, I just changed the whole number there. Identify the type of scale shown on the map. The type of scale. So let's go to this map. So this map has a scale up here, right? I'm just going to do that. And we can see that it is a line or a bar scale, right? Sometimes we get ratio scales where it's like, 1 to 50 or something like that. That's a ratio scale. Whereas this one is an actual bar or a line. Okay. It's just the type. So we're going to say here, bar or line scale. They're literally just testing that you understand the different types and you can identify the different types of scales in a map. Okay. So now we're getting to our bit more meaty questions. We can see that by the mark allocation, right? So let's just look at 4.1.5. So it says the measured, oh, excuse me, the measured map distance between point A and point B is 10 centimeters. Use the given scale to calculate the actual distance to the nearest kilometer. So it's telling us to round off between point A and B. Okay, so Let's just see. So there's A and B, right? So you can use a ruler um, to just draw. Sorry, my ruler is a little bit broken, but we can just draw a straight line between A and B, right? And it's saying that that's 10 centimeters, right? So we can just write that down, say A to B equals 10 centimeters, okay? And what we need to do is we need to identify our scale. Right, so a scale basically what it does is it indicates to us that the map that we're seeing here is a small version, a simplified version of reality, right? So this whole area is much bigger in reality than is shown on this paper, and that is what this scale indicates, right? So let's just use our ruler, okay? Let's use our ruler to see how many centimeters equals four kilometers, because we can see that over here it equals four kilometers. And if I'm reading correctly, make sure that you try to be as accurate as possible. I'm getting 4.1 centimeters, right? I'm getting 4.1 centimeters equals, or is ratio, you can do like that, right? You can do ratio or equals four kilometers, okay? So now we have to make sure that this 4.1 is equal to 10. So it's a little bit tricky to just make it equal to 10. Let's rather make it equal to one centimeter and see what one centimeter equals in kilometers, okay? You might be thinking and saying, okay, but Margie, what about when, like what about putting them in the same measurement? Now it's important that measurement, keeping measurement consistent is important when we come to volume and area. But when we're talking about scale, it's okay to have two different measurements on each side of the ratio, as long as we indicate that, okay? So remember with ratios, when I'm trying to get from 4 comma 1 to 1, right? I basically am saying 4 comma 1 divided by 4 comma 1 gives me 1. So I'm dividing here by 4.1, okay? That's just a little explanation. So what I do to the one side, I have to do to the other side when it comes to ratios. So I have to say four, cent four kilometers divided by 4.1, which gives me 0 0.9756. Now, don't take this off your calculator. Rather leave it there because we want to use all the decimal places when we're working it out, okay? So what we've calculated here is one centimeter equals this many kilometers, okay? So if we have 10 centimeters, right, we basically are saying to get from one to 10, we multiply, oh, sorry, we multiply by 10. So if we do multiplication by 10 on the one side, we have to multiply by 10 on the other side. So we're gonna take this amount that we have in our calculator over here and multiply it by 10. Okay, and it gives me 9.75609.7561 kilometers. But we, this is our final answer. So we can say the distance from A to B 
equals 9.76 kilometers. Now, I've rounded off, and the reason I've rounded up is because my third decimal place is above 5, right? If it is 5 or above, we round up. So it's 9.76 kilometers, and that is our final answer. Okay, so it's all about, one, measuring your scale correctly, two, getting it into a ratio form that's easy to use, and then getting it into a form that is actually particular to the question. Then you round off your final answer. Okay, so that is that question there, four marks in the bag. Okay, now let's go back to our question. And this is the last question of 4.1. So it shows some drones, okay? So it says, field guides sometimes use drones, remote controlled aircraft, to monitor the movement of animals in parks. Okay, the drone travels at an average speed of 30 kilometers per hour, right? So it's saying in, 30, in an hour, it goes from one place to another place and the distance between those two places is 30 kilometers. For a particular task, the drone flew a distance of 10 kilometers from the guide, right? And thereafter returned. So it went 10 kilometers that way and 10 kilometers that way. That's important, right? Okay, it went two sets of 10 kilometers, okay? and it returned to the guide. Calculate the total time in minutes for this particular task. You may use the following formula. Time equals distance over speed. Okay, so what we know is that this guy, right, this little drone guy, has an average speed of 10 kilometers per hour. Hour. Oh, sorry, not 10. 30 kilometers per hour. Okay, so what's important? Let's just convert that into minutes. Okay, so one hour equals 60 minutes, doesn't it? Right, so this can basically be translated into 30 kilometers per 60 minutes. Okay. So, if we wanted to now make this one kilometer and figure out how long it takes for one kilometer, we would say, it's like a ratio, right? You would say 30 divided by 30, right? Because we want to get one kilometer. So, 30 divided by 30 is one kilometer. And then we'd say 60 divided by 30, which would give me two minutes, right? So, he flies, this little drone flies one kilometer in two minutes. One kilometer in two minutes. Okay, 30 kilometers in 60 minutes, but one kilometer in two minutes. So we know that he goes 10 kilometers that way, okay, and then he comes back 10 kilometers to the guide. Okay, so we know that in total he flies 10 plus 10, which equals 20 kilometers, right? That's how much, how far he flies. So now, if one kilometer can be flown in two minutes, how long is it going to take to do 20 kilometers? Okay, so we know to get from 1 to 20, we must times by 20, mustn't we? And to get from 2 to whatever this is, we have to do the same thing on that side. Because whatever you do to the one side, you have to do to the other side. So the answer is 2 times 20 minutes, which equals 14 minutes. So the drone was flying, right, for 40 minutes in total. Let's just quickly go over that one more time. So we know that it flies at 30 kilometers per hour. We know that one hour equals 60 minutes. Okay, so he actually flies. I made this little drone a dude. I don't know why but he flies 30 kilometers in 60 minutes, okay? So he flies one kilometer in two minutes, okay? Then I said, okay, he flies 10 kilometers that way and 10 kilometers back. So in total, he flies 20 kilometers. Then I said, one kilometer takes two minutes. If I have 20 kilometers, how long is it gonna take? It's gonna take 40 minutes because it's gonna be two times, sorry, it's gonna be, 
Let me just make sure that this is correct. It's going to be 2 minutes times 20, right? Let me just make sure that that's correct. So it's going to be 40 minutes in total. Okay, and that is your final answer over there.